In this video, I'd like to walk you through my process for editing an infrared photo using a channel swap method. This uh, particular photo is a 590 nanometer uh, infrared filter uh, that was used on the camera. Uh, and uh, using a channel swap process with Photoshop and Lightroom, uh, and this is the final result. Now, if we take a look at the, uh, the beginning, this is the, the shot on the left is the actual out of camera. Uh, this is what it looks uh, by default with a, with a uh, custom white balance in the camera. Uh, so you get a pretty decent um, some separation here, but uh, we need to do some work to get to this final result we have on the right. So let's walk through the process of what that takes. We're going to start with uh, some, a little bit of work in Lightroom, mainly to get the white balance set before we head to Photoshop. So the first thing we've got to do is adjust the profile. The Adobe Color Profile does not give the range of white balance that we need. So I'm going to go to uh, the Profile Picker, and I've created a number of uh, custom profiles using the Adobe DNG Profile Editor, and I will select one of those. And now that that is selected, I can use the Color Picker and pick something white in the scene. In this case, it's going to be the white paint on the road. Now I've got some good separation of colors between the orange sky and that light blue uh, cyan foliage, and that's a good place to start. Okay, so now that we've got that set, now we can head over to Lightroom. So I'm going to open up this image in Lightroom, and we'll make this a little bit bigger. And now that we're in Lightroom, the first thing I'm going to do is run a set of actions. So I'll run these actions and then we will step through what each of them does. Basically a number of adjustment layers. So here is the, where we start with the image. The first adjustment layer is the channel mixer. And the channel mixer is basically swapping the red and blue channel. So on the blue we can see I have 100% red and no blue. And on the, uh, on the red channel we can see that I have no red and 100% blue. So that gets me my colors swapped uh, to where we are now. So good color swap, but the image is still a little bit flat, and that's what the levels layer does, is uh, help to create a little bit of contrast, uh, basically using the auto setting. Uh, I did auto beat so it could be part of an action, um, and a good starting point. We'll add more contrast, when, contrast once we get back to Lightroom. And then finally, the hue saturation layer. This is where the creative options kind of come into play. So this is kind of optional, but uh, it gives you a good chance to play around with the different colors we have here. And you can see... When I turn it on, it switches the sky from the default cyan into more of a blue color to work with. So let's start working with some of these colors. This is where the most uh, color creativity kind of comes into play in dealing with an infrared image when doing a channel swap. So first I'm, I'm going to work with the background. So let's start with the sky. I'll use this picker to pick the sky. That'll get me the cyan color, or I can pick colors in, uh, directly in here. Um, with the cyan, like I said, that that uh, zero hue would get me the uh, sort of teal look in the background. I want something that's a little more of a royal blue for this image, so I'm going to go a little bit past my default of 25 uh, to about there. The other thing that you'll notice uh, when dealing with an infrared is there's a little bit of blue information in the channel, but there's not a lot. So if I if I move around this, this uh, slider, you can see I still get a little bit of color there. Um, I'm going to adjust it slightly to the red, but not too much. I'm not going to mess around with saturation and lightness too much um, in Photoshop because I like the tools in Lightroom that give me a little bit more control. Um, if I if I do the lightness too much here, um, then I lose a lot of the color saturation as opposed to the luminance control in Lightroom. All right, so now let's head over to the foliage. Um, by default, we've got a little bit of an orange color. I can, again, use the hue slider. If I go to the right, I'm going to get into yellows and then some neon greens. And if I was would go to the left, we've got some orange, pink, fuchsia, red, um, purple colors going on. Uh, so lots of options that you can you can to take the the direction of whatever image you have. In this case, I'm going to go with something a little bit more of a yellow with maybe just a hint of orange. So something right about there looks pretty good. Um, again, I'm not going to mess with the saturation and lightness at this point. I'm also going to touch the red channel. And in this case, the red channel is, um, 
used mostly in the shadows of the foliage and on the tree trunks. And you can see if I slide this around, I can get some a little bit more separation. It's giving me another color to work with, which is really nice. You don't always get that in an infrared shot. Um, if I go to the right here and, and give it a yellow, then it just kind of blends all the yellows together, which doesn't give me as much. It's not as nice of a look. But if I if I can bring it over a little bit into a little bit into the orange territory. Uh, now I can create a little bit of separation. If I get too much red, it's not a little, little too strong, but I'm going to just take a little bit, maybe even not much off the default, uh, just to create a little bit of separation. And again, I will play more with these, the saturation and lightness once I get into Lightroom. Okay, so that's it for Photoshop. So I'm going to just flatten this layer, just save a little bit of space, and save the image. And once that's saved, then we will head over to Lightroom. Okay, so now, uh, back in Lightroom, um, and now basically we've got some cleanup to do, a little more color tweaks, and then some sort of your some of your traditional sort of landscape things. So first thing I want to do is uh, fix the horizon, get it with the crop tool. We have an actual horizon here um, that we can play with, so I'm going to use the uh, angle tool to draw a line on my horizon, and we'll get that straightened around. Uh, the other thing I want to do is kind of clean up the edges. We've got a little busyness going on on the right that I think distracts from the image. So I'm going to bring the crop in just enough on the right to get rid of some of that um, busyness. And then on the left side, maybe a little bit more just to kind of center things up here. The other thing I want to do is get rid of this bottom uh, border, this uh, the white paint here strip, because it's not level the way it was shot, it looks kind of odd, but if I can drag down and make sure none of that is clipping on the edge of the frame, then I think it'll look a little bit better. Okay, so if I see my preview up here on the left, I can see that works good and I've got my edge taken care of. All right, so my cropping is done. Everything looks a lot better now. The next thing I want to do is um, just double check my white balance. There's a little bit of blue sort of creeping into this asphalt road and I want that to be more of a gray so I'm going to tweak I think I'm going to do that uh, through a graduated filter so I'm going to bring a graduated filter here and I'm probably going to do a number of things with this graduated filter to fix the road so first thing I mentioned is zero everything out here I want to get rid of that blue so I'm just going to add in a little bit of yellow just a little bit um, I want to cancel the blue out, but it's not even across, so I don't want to create too much of a yellow spot in the middle here. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is I want to add some texture. The texture tool is really nice, um, but I don't want it to be throughout the image and muss muck around with the foliage too much. So I'm going to actually, I, and I, as a result, I usually limit what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do a little bit more here because I'm limiting it to the to the bottom of the frame. And maybe add a little bit of clarity here. All right, so that's cleaned up the bottom. And then I think I'm going to drop the exposure a little bit as well. There's this white, these white lines are great, but they're just really dominating the image. And so if I cut back just a little bit, maybe a quarter stop on the exposure, then they're just not dominating the image so much. Okay. So that's, that's really nice. So now let's deal with the contrast. We still need more contrast. First thing I'll do is go into the tone curve and add some contrast there. Back at basic uh, tab, we'll do some a little bit of regular contrast to get that going. Um, don't need to do any more texture. Might add a little bit more clarity overall uh, to the image. The clarity tends to be pretty impactful in uh, the kind of dramatic infrared shots that I like. A little bit of dehaze as well. I don't want to do too much. It can really get out of control fast in some of these images. So sometimes it's only like 10 or 15 that I'm adding. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, I'm pretty close, but I, I really need to finish off these colors. The colors are just a little bit too much. And that's where I can go into HSL here and, and finish this off. So first, I want to address the sky. I want to pull a little bit more of that saturation out of the sky and get a little bit darker. So I'll use the picker tool 
and in saturation we'll bring this down a little bit maybe a lot all right so that's a little bit better and then from a luminance standpoint i want it to be a little bit darker as well to create a little bit of separation you, you got to be careful if, if i go too dark um, you can get some fringing that would happen the fringing uh, not too bad it was a little worse if you were using this tool in photoshop but it's not so bad here but just want to take a little bit of the edge it's just too bright all right so that's pretty good okay now i want to address the um uh, the foliage so for that we'll start with the yellows here and i want to bring the luminance down a little bit because it's just a little too punchy and I, I again i like the luminance tool here in lightroom because i still keep a lot of the saturation um, and I have control over it here as opposed to that um, lightness tool in the in the color channels that um, don't have as much control I'm gonna bring the saturation down a little bit as well it's still a little bit in your face okay that's pretty good now I want to address this uh, the the shadows the the undercover so that uh, this kind of red channel so the first thing we'll do is uh, let's see bring the saturation down a bit so it's a little bit more realistic some, some you know realistic bark sort of coloring without being looking like it's too artificially colored and the luminance maybe just a nudge up but not too much okay all right so now looking at uh, the the yellows I think I'm still gonna bring a little bit of the yellows down in luminance a little bit darker okay all right so I think we're pretty close here so the next thing that I want to do is just look at this full screen see what it looks like so I'll hit F and we will bring it up to full screen um, and now I can take a look um, kind of get a feel for what the colors look like and how everything feels and I think this is pretty good so pretty close to the intent of what I was looking for um, still feel like there's a little bit of a bright hot spot here going on that might be part of the lens kind of one of the normal things you have to deal with infrared is being careful about your the lens you're, you're using and kind of a hot spot it creates so I see those effects now and then so what I'm going to do is just create a little bit of a inverted radial filter here and bring down the exposure just a hair in the middle maybe widen this out a bit okay there that kind of evens it out a bit so not so distracting okay great so i think that's it so this is uh our finished image let me just check my settings here yep i think we're we're pretty good here okay so this is the finished image and let's go back and compare this to where we started so we started uh, with this image on the left of course that was um, before we had made these profile adjustments so if I switch back to its native profile and the original white balance now we can see a true comparison of before and after so on the left is our uh, original image out of camera and then the right image is uh, after adding a uh, DNG profile uh, doing a, a channel swap in Photoshop and then coming back to Lightroom and finishing up the edit in Lightroom so there you go there's my process for editing a 590 nanometer infrared image uh, using Lightroom and Photoshop I hope you enjoyed thanks <laughs>